To follow along with the written version of this video with animated GIFs included, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash magic loop. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make the magic loop method for crochet, also known as the magic ring or magic circle. But first, what is the magic loop? The magic loop is a simple method for starting your crochet in the round that makes the tightest, least noticeable center. It makes it easy to create the first round of stitches and creates a tight hole that if done properly will not come undone. The magic loop is a necessity for crocheting amigurumi, which is almost always done in the round, and its alternative, the chain two method, often leaves a noticeable hole in the center. In this tutorial, I'll show you two different ways that I make the magic loop and the pros and cons to each. For the purpose of this video, I'll be referring to them as different things, the first being the magic loop, and the second being the magic ring. But that is only for the purpose of this video. If you see magic loop, ring or circle written in any pattern, they're referring to either of these methods. Additionally, I should mention that there are definitely other ways to make the magic loop. I'm just gonna be showing you my two favorite ways and explaining the differences. To make the magic loop, you're going to need some yarn and a crochet hook, and that is it. The yarn and hook doesn't really matter, just use whatever you need for the project. That being said, the second method I'll be talking about, which I call the magic ring, is preferable for more slippery or easily broken yarn, but we'll talk about that more in that section. Finally, for this tutorial specifically, I'll be using the single crochet and chain stitch. I'll discuss how to do both of these in this video, but it might also be useful for you to know those stitches prior to the video. I have video tutorials for each of them, which I will link to in the description. And if you like this video, please make sure to like it down below and subscribe to the channel. I make a bunch of crochet tutorials and patterns just like this one that you might enjoy and do weekly crochet alongs where we make a new item each week. Okay, let's start with what I refer to as the magic loop. This is, in my opinion, the easiest and often the best way to crochet a magic loop. It's the method that I use now almost exclusively. To crochet the magic loop, Pinch the yarn between your middle finger and thumb with your non-dominant hand. Make sure the end of the yarn is facing down towards the floor, not up. Don't release this while you're making the magic loop. Wrap the yarn around the back of your index and middle finger and then back up and over the yarn that you're pinching to make an X. Then go back around and down your index and middle finger again and put the yarn between your ring and pinky fingers and then close them in to keep the end pinched. Now you should have an X on the side facing you and two parallel bars on the back of your fingers. With the two bars on the back of your fingers facing you, place your crochet hook under the first bar and hook onto the second bar. Pull this under the first bar and twist it to make a loop on your crochet hook. Now go over the first bar with your hook and yarn over with the yarn from your second bar. You may need to help guide the yarn onto the hook with your index finger of your dominant hand. Pull this through the loop you just made to create a chain stitch. I like to kind of scoop the yarn a bit to help it through. You just made the magic loop. The yarn should be held together enough now for you to slide the loop off your fingers. Now we'll be making our first round of stitches into the center of this loop. When we have all of our stitches of our first round made, we'll pull this tail end to tighten the hole closed. You can pull it now slightly to see what I mean and close the loop a bit to make a more manageable loop to work with. I like to make it about the size of a penny before creating my first round of stitches. For this video, I'll be making six single crochets into the magic loop. For a single crochet, we insert our hook into the center of the hole, yarn over, and pull a loop through the hole. Then going over the loop, yarn over again, and pull this loop through the two loops on the hook. I'll be making six of these for my first round, but you can make less or more depending on what your pattern says. The most that I find works for this magic loop is around 10 stitches. After that, it can be pretty tough to pull this tight. Once I have my six stitches, I can pull the tail end and it should close the hole tight. Now be careful here not to pull too tightly or it will break your yarn and you'll have to start all over. The next part is important for the magic loop method and the main drawback to this method versus the other one that I'm calling the magic ring. For the next few stitches in the next round, make sure to work around this tail end that you had left over. For example, 
For the next round, I'll be doing an increase or two single crochet stitches into each stitch that I made in round one. So for my first increase, I'll work my crochet hook into the first stitch that I made in round one and pull a loop through. Then before I finish my stitch, I'll take the tail end and place it between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to my yarn before completing the stitch. This will lock the tail end in place and help prevent it from loosening the hole. You want to work around this tail end for at least one more stitch to be sure. If you don't work around the tail end, your magic loop might come slightly loose over time. This is the main drawback to this method. Another drawback is if your yarn is a bit weaker, your yarn might snap while you're trying to tighten this hole up. I don't usually have that problem too often, but the next method should help with that if you're a little bit worried about it. With that, let's move on to the next method that I'm calling the magic ring method. This is the alternative method to making the magic loop and what I was using most often prior to learning the previous method, which I now call the magic loop. The biggest drawback is that this method can be a bit more complicated and has more opportunities for you to goof up, but it does have a few benefits, mostly that it won't come undone if you forget to work around the tail end, and it's less likely to break your yarn if you're using a weaker fiber like mohair. To make the magic ring, Place the yarn in your palm with the tail end facing up. Close your bottom three fingers around the yarn to make a finger gun. Now go around your index finger three times. Don't make this too tight. Open your fingers back up and place the tail end of your yarn between your middle and ring finger and then close your three fingers again to hold that tail end in place. Using your crochet hook, go under the first two bars on your index finger and hook onto the third bar. Now pull this under the first two. Okay, now going over the bars, yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull that through the loop that you just made to create a chain stitch. You can now safely slide this off of your index finger. You'll be working your first round into the center of this hole, just like you did in the magic loop method before. I'll be doing six single crochet stitches again. Make sure you're going under both of these loops of the yarn as you go. Okay, when you're done with your stitches, you can now tighten the loop. This is the main drawback to this method as it can be confusing on how to actually tighten the loop. First, delicately tug the tail end to pull one of these two loops slightly. Pay attention to which one gets tighter. Now that you know which one is tightened, grab it by the base hold it close to the first stitch that you made, and pull it tight by pulling downwards. This should pull the second loop tight and close the hole. Finally, you can pull the tail end to pull the first loop tight. You can see why this method can be a bit more complicated, but it does have some benefits. First, you don't need to worry about this tail end or worry about it loosening. This is very hard to loosen up. I still do like to work around the tail end just to be safe, but it's not necessary. Second, while pulling it tight, you don't need to worry as much about the yarn breaking. I haven't had yarn break using this method even with really fragile yarn like mohair. Personally, of these two methods, I really like the first one more because it's a lot easier and since I use cotton, my yarn doesn't really break or loosen often, if ever. But let me know what you think. Which one's your favorite and do you use a different method besides these two? If so, what kind of benefits have you found to that method? I'm really curious to see if there's another method that I'm missing out on. <laughs> Please make sure again to like this video down below and subscribe to the channel and check out more of my tutorial videos. You might like Crocheting 101. That's my beginner series that goes through all the stitches and techniques that you should know as a crocheter. It also has projects that you make along the way so you actually see your progress being used. I also have a bunch of patterns and other tutorials on my channel so go ahead and browse through and see what you like. Thanks again for watching or reading along. Happy hooking and pasta la pizza. Bye.